What's going on guys, Slavey here and welcome back to another Albion Online video. Today I'm going to show you what's possible in the Slayer level of the Corrupted Dungeons when you have high specs and use a cheap build. And when I say cheap, I mean real cheap. The entire loadout I'm using in this video costs only 290k silver. That's a very low price to pay to participate in the most competitive 1v1 PvP content Albion Online has to offer. Aside from sharing the build, I'll show you my gains after losing 10 of these sets. I'll also explain what abilities to take for both PvE and PvP, and finally make the build even cheaper for you, so that you can use this very strong build on the Stalker level if you wish to do so. Now I can already see some of the comments go like, this is impossible without high specs, or 290k isn't budget for new players, and probably something in the lines of not everyone is as good in PvP, so let me quickly clarify all three of these misconceptions. First of all, I am not a Corrupted Dungeon player. For the past year, all I've done is Roads of Avalon and Faction Warfare, so nothing smaller than 7-man groups. I only did Corrupted Dungeons for a couple days when it was introduced and quickly figured I just don't like solo PvP that much. Although I must say, since I started doing them again to record some builds for you guys to use, I do enjoy it a bit more this time around. It is true that you can't do what's shown in this video as a brand new player, since you don't have the specs, but if anything, it is something you can look forward to. As I already said, the Slayer level of the Corrupted Dungeons is the most competitive 1v1 PvP content in the game right now. I think you should build a fair bit of experience in the Hunter and Stalker level first, before you start doing Slayer, and by then you will also start having some specs, and your loadout cost will be pretty similar to what's shown in this video. And finally, once again, I will go over how you can make this loadout cheaper, so you can use it in the Stalker level, which is what you should be doing as a newer player, if you wish to do Corrupted Dungeons with the full loot aspect to it. Now there is a reason why this video is named Barely Slayer, and that's because I actually made the loadout for Stalker at first, but when I got to the first Corrupted Dungeon, I noticed I can actually enter Slayer with my loadout. Although it was barely, I still went with it. I believe I had 12 IP more than the minimum requirement of 1200. Now, after losing 10 sets and making this video, I realized that I didn't even hit the soft cap of 1300 IP, so I really played Slayer on hard mode over the last 10 sets, and I can tell you that I would have even more success if I actually met the item power soft cap. Many of the fights I lost were really close despite my lack of experience and most players had 1300 IP or more. I bought a total of 10 sets, which totaled about 3 million in silver, and the first thing I did was create a loadout for comfort and ease. I strongly recommend you do this as well, whether you will play this build or a different one. After losing all 10 of my sets, I ended up with more than one bank worth of items that totaled about 12 million silver. This includes some of the silver bags, but not all of them since early on I used them. Let's just see the ones I used as the silver that will go to repairing these items. Despite that, we are looking at 9 million worth of gains whilst having lost 10 sets, which I think is just amazing. Even more so considering the fact this was all done within the same day where I did the Corrupted Dungeons during whatever free time I had. So this is the loadout I created and the build I was using. We're using the Broadsword today, which has Mighty Blow as the special ability. When you use this ability, you leap towards your target and deal damage based on the amount of stacks you have. So ideally, you want to use it when you have max stacks. However, this ability does much more than damage alone, in which it also increases your resistances and interrupts spell casting. The resistance buff you get is not based on stacks whatsoever, so sometimes I like to use it at the start of the fight when I don't have any stacks simply to close the gap whilst getting a defense advantage. Now this ability has a very low cooldown at only 10 seconds and it will be back up again by the time I've built up my stacks, therefore I think using it the way I do can sometimes give you an advantage. But of course, based on the matchup, it might also be wise to hold on to your special ability for the interrupt. On the primary ability, you always want to take Heroic Strike when you are doing PvP. The difference between Heroic Strike and Heroic Cleave is that the first one is single target and the second one is AoE. So although Cleave is great for clearing mobs and PvE, you want to be on Strike for the PvP for higher damage and a guaranteed hit. 
Your primary ability is also what builds up the heroic charge stacks, which affects the damage you do with your special ability. As for the secondary ability, you want to take the one that favors you most during a specific fight. Splitting Slash is great if you want to root your enemies in place whilst doing a lot of damage to them. This however is a skill shot, so missing it can be very punishing. The other secondary ability I found myself using is Parry Strike, which makes you immune against damage and reflects all of the damage back at the attacker, whilst also doing AoE damage around you. The other secondary abilities can be useful as well, but these are the two I found myself using throughout the day. It's really important you select the right secondary ability based on your matchup. As for the passive on this weapon, I like to take deep cuts, which makes for extra damage through bleed and actually help me secure one of my kills. We take the taproot offhand with the broadsword for extra health. We also take a 0.1 beef sandwich to increase our HP even more together with a couple 0.1 healing potions for percentage healing. This setup is what's known as HP stacking in which you take a bunch of items that increase your health pool which also makes the healing potion more effective. That third cape for extra damage on our basic attacks which also is fine to have in PvE to clear the mobs faster. Then we have the Hunt the Hood which has Retaliate which makes for increased defenses and more importantly Reflect. You want to use this ability to buy yourself for seconds or interrupt the rotation of your enemy during a moment where they will be dishing out a lot of damage. The counterplay to this ability is that it can be purged since it is a buff. So if the enemy has their Matrope active, be careful of hitting them. If they have a Fiend Cal or a Graveguard Helmet however, there's little you can do against it. With this build, I like to take Quick Tinker as the passive for lower cooldowns. Then we have the Matrope ourselves, which also increases your resistances, but more importantly gives you a shield that purges all the buffs on the attacker. So if you see your enemy has a lot of buffs activated or stacks built up, you can use this ability to break their rotation once again and reduce the damage they do by a lot. Aggression as the passive on the Matrope for extra damage. And finally, we have the Soldier Boots, where you can use any of the three abilities based on your matchup. Do keep in mind when the Lust has ramp up time, during which it is very vulnerable against Burgess, but also very slow at the beginning. Toughness as the passive on the Boots for increased defenses. So that's the setup for PvP, where you select the secondary ability and your Boots based on the matchup. As for PvE, I like to be lazy and swap as little as possible, so what I do is take Heroic Cleave and Splitting Slash on the weapon, but if you can be bothered to swap, you are better off with Heroic Strike against bosses. This build isn't energy hungry, so you can keep Retaliate on your helmet, but you do want to swap Purging Shield to Mend Wounds on your armor for some healing throughout the dungeon. On the boots, I like to take Rejuvenating Sprint for some mobility and healing during PvE. So the final thing I will share with you is how to make this build even cheaper for Stalker level. Now I do think for Slayer this is the minimum you want and in fact I would strongly advise to push your IP to 1300. Going to Slayer with only 1200 IP was definitely a mistake on my end, but it's still cool to see that even with such a disadvantage this build is very capable. Now your weapon and armor pieces are all normal items, therefore it's impossible to make these any cheaper. However, since the taproot offhand is an artifact, you could make it cheaper by going for a different one. I think the mist color would be a great affordable choice for that purpose. If you want to play more aggressively however, the Musak is also an affordable and very solid option. The tethered cape you simply want to swap out for a regular cape, which will make you lose out on DPS, but it does make the build much cheaper. Then finally, you want to take non-enchanted food and potions, since these tend to be very expensive. Now do keep in mind that if you swap out the taproot offhand, you won't be HP stacking as effectively. Therefore, personally, I would still go with the taproot offhand. As a non-corrupted dungeon player, I am very impressed by what this build is capable of and the gains it made for. I started with 10 sets and now I can literally buy 40 of them. And that's only after a day of doing Corrupted Dungeons. What I am going to do instead is create an entire new loadout and buy 10 other sets and make a new build video. I'm thinking of Spears next since you guys seem to really love those weapons. 
I also seem to enjoy Corrupted Dungeons a bit more right now, so let's get it going with some builds for you guys to use. I wish you the best if you decide to use this build, and perhaps come back to this video and let me know how this build goes for you. As always, remember to have fun, and I'll see you next time.